Yes, crime is up dramatically underground. We know that. The numbers back that up. There are now more officers underground than there have been in months. I don't see them. Crime was 45% higher this January compared to last year. We've got individuals roaming the subway with guns, with weapons. I don't feel safe at all. <laughs> Crime has been at the forefront of many people's minds after several MTA workers were recently attacked. We're not asking for much. We're asking for safety. They must be prioritized. Officers patrolling the trains recovered 17 guns in the last month. That's triple the amount last year. We want uh, officers walking through the trains, being at the platforms, being near the token booth. Mayor Adams says the subway system is averaging about six felonies every day. And this past January, 1.5 people were assaulted every single day. And the MTA who manages the subway isn't talking about how down here, you're about as safe as you'd be in international waters. Where you've got just as many rules out there as you have down here. Despite all the cameras and newfangled contraptions they're inventing to try and keep us safe. My favorite has to be the subway barriers, which won't do anything, but they do look kind of cool and they're probably expensive. But what nobody's talking about is that while crime is skyrocketing, the city is wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars on things that are supposed to make us all safer without having to arrest anybody. We'll see if those work. But what's truly shocking is the number of weapons police are finding down here. And this should terrify all of us. The next stop is 42nd Street, Bryan Officers patrolling the trains recovered 17 guns in the last month. That's triple the amount last year. And they made more than 250 arrests for other weapons. That's incredibly frightening. 17 weapons is like finding one every other day. And these probably aren't registered weapons that a gun owner who's law-abiding forgot accidentally. Whatever's being found down here was likely stolen. Which means the people carrying them in here have already committed one crime. Which makes you wonder, what other types of crime did they intend on committing? with those weapons that the police luckily confiscated. But the real issue nobody's talking about down here isn't that the police are finding weapons. It's that 80% of the weapons cases result in the person getting released. And how are criminals supposed to take weapons laws seriously if there's only a 19.5% chance of them winding up in jail? The most recent data we have shows that 165 people were arrested a second time with a weapon. Which means there's probably somebody in the train right now, right around here, that's been caught with a gun before and may have have one now and hasn't been arrested yet. And that's not something your everyday commuter wants to think about, that's for sure. But some people think the city is lying about its crime statistics and they're actually worse than what they're portraying. So a local news network did their own investigation and what they found was shocking. Our team of data journalists have come up with some startling statistics. There's been a 22.6% increase in subway crime, 266 incidents compared to 217 in 2023. Okay, not only is this a massive jump in statistics, each statistic is a real person with a real story. Plus, New Yorkers are now three times more likely to report a felony assault than they were a decade ago. However, since not all crimes get reported, the real numbers could be even higher, which is why, as we'll soon see, the city is testing out a bunch of new pilot programs to see if they can stop crime. I'm not gonna hold my breath. But the scary thing is a lot of what's happening now is just senseless and barbaric. The same day as a knife attack in Queens, a man playing the electric cello in the mezzanine of the Herald Square station was attacked from behind by a woman who hit him on the head with a metal bottle. Okay, a classically trained subway performer getting attacked, that should make everybody sad. That's like the treat that you rarely get on your miserable commute underground. On top of that, the woman who attacked this guy while he was playing the cello is 23 years old and has eight prior arrests and was released without bail, which means she's still out there. And apparently the person who was attacked, it happened to them twice within one year and they're also a PhD student. But it looks like society is falling apart so quickly that this is gonna be something that goes the way of the dinosaur. 
Police are looking for this man who on Saturday hit a 31 year old man multiple times over the head with a metal pipe. And then we've got another person just minding their own business, waiting to go about their day, and they just get hit in the head with a foreign object randomly. It's terrifying to think that this could happen to just about anybody for no apparent reason. You're just walking through the train, trying to get to your next destination, and then wham. I remember being on the platform during an episode someone was having, as we'll call it. The person was walking around aggressively, removing their clothing and yelling at people. It was very frightening. There were no police. And at that moment, you just kind of realize that you're on your own. What thoughts go through your mind? It's just like if people are going to push you. Usually, you know, it's not safe. I don't know what's going on in New York now. So really, it should come as no surprise that riders are terrified. And that's having a major effect on subway ridership as a whole. Because the entire system is just losing massive amounts of money as riders stay away. And try to use safer transportation options that don't involve them putting their lives at risk. E-bikes, Ubers, restricting travel times to the early morning when there's not a whole lot of activity down here. Seven, eight, nine. You've got to plan your commute when the criminals are most likely asleep. If you're here early, like 2, 3 a.m., oh, man, I wouldn't want to be in the subway then. And look at this. In 2019, the system had 5.5 million riders per day, and now we're down to about 3.6 million, which is a lot of people, but this system is still operating and wasting money as if it were 2019, and it's not, and that's a problem. In fact, now the system is only making about half as much money as it used to. And what nobody's talking about is how the increases in crime in the subway, the city says that's their excuse for why the system is losing money. But instead of working to rectify that, they're going to have congestion pricing to tax cars and alternate means of transportation to try and force people to start paying for the subway, even though it might be dangerous. While telling us they'll improve the system after people decide to start paying for it. And although it's doubtful that will ever happen, what's almost a foregone conclusion is that things are going to get worse down here before they get better because it's not just riders who are under attack. It's the people that run the trains as well. are stationed just steps from where the transit worker was assaulted. She discovered a man sleeping beneath a blanket. She will back away and get punched repeatedly in the face. So thankfully, the person involved in this incident is going to make a full recovery. It's a tough injury, but thank God it wasn't worse. And the attack itself happened at the Wall Street Station, steps away from where the masters of the universe make money, whether things are good or whether things are bad. You'd figure they at least would have security down there, but they don't. And what's really frightening about this is not only was this a subway employee where the offenses for attacking them are increased, there were police in the station nearby and they weren't able to do anything to protect this person until it was already too late. And the question is, why was this non-police officer the first person to check on a weird situation in the subway to see what was going on? Isn't that something that the police should be doing? I'm not hating on the police, they're overworked. There are not enough of them, but still, it's very scary. On top of that, the attacker was curled up underneath one of these benches, which had its back up against a wall. Apparently the workers saw something strange, maybe some movement, went over to check it out, see what was going on. And that's the moment things went terribly wrong. And the question nobody wants to answer is where was the subway's vulnerable outreach program? The city is spending $103 million on a three-year contract with a nonprofit to reach out to those who might need help in the subway. And the goal of this is to deploy workers who interact with those who might be in a tough situation and help them understand that there are shelters that they could go to. But it doesn't really seem like it's being very effective, as we're learning today. In 2019, the subway's inspector general criticized the program, saying at best it offered minimal homeless outreach services. And he accused the program of turning away people who needed actual help. That audit also revealed the CEO of that nonprofit earns $400,000 a year. On top of that, city data shows that the number of homeless individuals in the subway has remained flat since this program started, which means there's no way to tell if it's doing anything. We're not asking for much. We're asking for safety. It must be prioritized. This don't make no right now on what is going on to our members in this system. But the real issue here is that as transit workers end up putting their lives at risk to take people places, we're going to end up with more incidents and less trains. And these types of issues put the entire system's integrity at risk. And without a working, reliable subway system that's safe with trains that run on time, the city is not going to be able to function and the economy may actually decline because pretty much everybody takes it. But it's important that we go over the city's recent attempts to try and keep everybody safe because like it or not New York's depending on these efforts being successful, even if it looks like they probably won't work. Because at the end of the day, I think everybody down here hopes they do.
so here we have one of the few subway police stations and if you don't see a lot of activity here that's because they're on 12 hour shifts now patrolling all of the stations but sadly since there's a shortage of police we haven't seen as many of them today as we would like do you yeah, think it's big. dangerous down here it is it's just, it's just totally dangerous do you think it's worse now than it was maybe a few years ago yes 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 do you think that seeing more police would make people feel safer yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The mayor says part of the challenge was losing funding for its subway safety plan that flooded the system with officers in 2022. As a temporary solution, the mayor announced Tuesday that officers will begin 12 hour shifts to bolster visibility underground. Someone went through the emergency gate. But 12 hour shifts from the NYPD, the reason there's a problem with that is because the broadcast we just listened to mentioned how the last time there was a police surge down here, it did accomplish a lot, but it was only accomplished when there was special funding for it. And that's a problem because it means the only way to clean up the subway is to get special funding in order to do it. And it also means the police force necessary to keep everybody safe is unsustainable. And it means that any past crime decreases were never anything that should have been celebrated. Because as we're learning, crime reverts to new highs after those programs, which are temporary, come to an end. The city unfortunately doesn't seem interested in expanding its police presence, which would be the action needed if you want to have a subway that's safe all the time, not just some of the time. Also, there are other types of crime that the police have to deal with in New York City, not just down here, but also up there on the streets. And if you pull police off the streets to put them in the subway, crime on the streets is going to get worse. So we're really just shifting around the crime that we have to different parts of town. We want uh, officers walking through the trains, uh, being at the platforms, being near the token booth. Crime has been at the forefront of many people's minds after several MTA workers were recently attacked. So every Everyone wants what the mayor wants. He's a former police officer. He understands how important it is to have police, not just in the terminals, but riding the trains, monitoring the entry points to catch fare beaters. It would also be nice to see officers in a long tunnel like this. The lack of police anywhere in the system just emboldens criminals. Now, luckily, the increased patrols should end up having some effect. Yes, it will be temporary, but it should give the city time to figure out what our real solution to this whole problem is. Let's be honest, everybody down here knows what the real solution is, even if the city doesn't want to talk about it. Plus, the city's goal is to make some common sense improvements. To improve conditions underground, the MTA is adding LED lighting. Transit officials say better lighting will help their hundreds of thousands of cameras better capture photos if crimes do occur. So I think one of them is these lights here in this station. It's actually brighter down here than in most of the other terminals that we've visited so far. But you see the way this light is flickering? I don't know if this is actually an LED look at that maybe it is and i just don't understand how light bulbs work but i do understand how cameras work and those tiny little pinhole security cameras that you see throughout they need a lot of light if they're gonna capture a good image so this is what things look like from a high quality camera and then this is what things look like on the iphone's camera it's much smaller it's gonna be closer to what the security cameras are looking at on top of that a lot of the cameras down here are super old they don't get upgraded all that often and that's why good lighting is so important to getting a good security image but Luckily, there's another improvement they're going to start making in the subway. And once you see what it is, you're going to wonder why they didn't do it 30 years ago. So these here are the latest safety feature the city is testing out. Subway pushings have long prompted for a search for solutions, and as New Yorkers continue getting shoved onto the tracks, one of the leading ideas has finally arrived. New barriers are in place. So the obvious purpose of these is to keep people from winding up on the tracks. Unfortunately, incidents of people getting onto the subway tracks have risen recently. Some of it is because people are pushed. Other incidents are because the platforms are very narrow. This particular platform is extremely narrow. In fact, we're not supposed to wait in this area because as you can see, the tree is like right there. And that's why having the barriers is a fantastic idea. Because the most dangerous thing that could happen to you down here is to wind up where all the electricity is. But even though these seem incredibly solid, I don't know how effective they're gonna be because I mean, they're not everywhere. R22 door. I think they were planning to put one here, but they didn't. But definitely something is better than nothing. And I can't believe this is the first time these have ever been tried. You can see there's several on this platform over here. These will definitely keep people away from any area that doesn't lead to a train door. 
Honestly, it looks like a big safety measure, a lot more protection for the kids and also for elderly people of uh, problems as well, such as health issues. Though that was just a guess, this passenger G was spot on with the MTA's latest initiative. The agency is breaking in the new barriers are part of a pilot program. So I can see how these would be effective. Most pushing incidents happen suddenly and randomly. But now with these barriers, there's way less room for someone to fall onto the tracks. There's also not a lot of room here. You're definitely going to bump into somebody if you're passing each other. And to be honest with you, not only am I a fan of common sense, low tech solutions like this, anything more expensive expensive than a metal grate is probably not something the subway system can afford right now. Plus, they're super comfortable to lean on, which looks like it's against the rules. A track trespassing task force nearly two years ago released a report detailing an increase of track trespassing incidents by 20% between 2019 and 2021, despite a dwindling ridership during that same period. Oof, those are some alarming statistics. And it's incredible that incidents of people winding up on the tracks were up even when ridership was down. Only in New York City could a statistic Statistic like that, be real. But as a subway rider during 2021, that was when I first noticed that the idea of getting shoved onto the tracks was something that we should all start being concerned about. That's when I first started hearing about it. And just think of how many incidents could be avoided at larger stations like this one if barriers were in place, especially on these insanely dangerous centerline platforms. Look at all that room right there. But the big question is, what can the city do to keep people safe in the trains? Should they hire more police, install more barriers, or should they give out free pretzels to everybody? Let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.